For a while now, if you wanted to get a sense of what Google's latest Android operating system was like, you could install an early developer preview and start fiddling around with the basics. Not every feature that you're going to see in the final release was available back then, but it was a start. This week at Google I.O., though, the company showed off a grander vision, a more clear picture of what it wants Android Q to be, and we've got it in the form of a public beta, which we've installed on our Pixel 3a, which is, by the way, incredible. Now, I just have to be clear with you up front. We are gonna look at some of the new features available in this public beta build, but I think the real meat here are the privacy features, some of which you'll notice and some of which you just won't. They'll just be taking away in the background, making sure that your data goes fewer places, at least when you don't want it to. Let's take a closer look. I know this won't be the case for everyone watching this video, but one of the biggest changes here is the inclusion of a system-wide dark mode. It's not exactly a dark mode like you might be used to. It's not dark gray, this is full black. For a phone like the Pixel 3a with an OLED display, anytime you see black, that doesn't mean the screen is just displaying black, it means large portions of the display are actually off, which means big savings for your battery. I should actually point out that when you enable battery saver mode, it automatically kicks over into this dark theme, which I don't know. I don't know that it's making a huge difference in battery life so far, but on a device like this where the battery is pretty solid anyway, you're only going to see improved longevity. The other thing that Google has finally fixed, for me at least, are gestures. I don't know if you've tried Android P, and I'm sure a lot of you have. Once you switch away from the traditional three button navigation into this weird back button, but you've got this pill thing that you manipulate from time to time, it's just, it's, it's kind of a mess. Google has fixed this situation in a few ways. And I kind of hate to say it, but it does sort of feel like they were lifted from an iOS device. And that's, to me, not a bad thing. We've, instead of the traditional hit the back button or use that pill thing and swipe up and whatever with a double swipe for the app launcher and it just can't, you now can swipe up from wherever you are to go back to the home screen. If you want to go back one level, like you would with the back button, you can swipe from the left or the right side of the screen, which is interesting, useful to me at least, and also kind of problematic because companies like Samsung do actually make use of those sides of the display. You could swipe in on a Galaxy Note, for example, and build up an extra tray of apps. I don't know how that's going to work out, and that's kind of Samsung's problem, but I do think it works elegantly enough for now that I want Google to make this the default for everybody on every version of Android Q. The one that feels a little less than elegant is the sort of recent apps view, the multitasking mode, as I like to call it. Basically, in order to access that, you don't just swipe, you swipe up and over, which takes a little bit of getting used to. I've actually personally found that if you're quick enough, you can sort of get a diagonal swipe to get it going, but I'm not nearly good enough at that to recommend anyone actually try that. Like I've said, this is mostly a video about privacy, and there are at least a few ways Google has made this beta version of Android Q significantly better than what you might be used to. For one, if you jump into the settings, you'll find a new privacy section where you can manage permissions for both apps that access the location and the phone's status itself. Now, that's probably not a thing most people are gonna spend time pouring over. I know for a fact my family will look at this once and forget that it exists entirely. But if you're concerned about what uses your location and when, this is kind of a godsend. So if you wanna use Facebook Messenger, which based off of Facebook's recent privacy problems is I'm sure completely bulletproof, totally fine, don't worry about it. You can actually set it so it doesn't use your location all the time, but you can still, for instance, send your location while you're inside the app. And that sort of control extends through just about every app that's available on your phone. By default, a lot of them will just not touch location at all, but Google, to its credit, has made it really easy to scrub through and see if something that has access to your phone or your location simply should not. I can't say I'm entirely surprised that Google created a new privacy section for a smartphone, because think about the conversations people are having right now. People are concerned about where their data goes and who has access to it. By talking about it more openly and by giving us the tools we need to address some of these potential privacy issues without having to root through a thousand different submenus, Google is acknowledging that, yes, this is a complicated world we live in. Whether or not we choose to do something with this data, these permissions, is up to us, but we have the options now and they're so much easier to get to. You might not notice this super frequently, but I kind of have. Google has improved Android Q's ability to stop apps from launching processes in the background. And that's probably a bit in the weeds for some of you, but in the time that I've been shooting this video, Amazon has tried to do stuff in the background without my knowledge twice, 
and Google stopped it from happening. The only way you'll tell is a little pop-up that kind of appears at the bottom of the screen. You don't really have to do anything about it. For most app developers who really just want you to interact with their app when it's directly in front of you, there's nothing to worry about. You're not really gonna be affected. But as I've just seen with Amazon here, sometimes apps try to overreach or at least do things without me being consciously aware of them. And with this new feature, Google is saying, no, don't, don't do that. So this next thing isn't actually new to Android Q Beta 3. It actually originated in the Beta 1 build, but it's worth talking about anyway. It's called Scope Storage, and really, really long story short, instead of allowing apps to sort of thrive within the larger file system, every app gets its own folder. Apps can create things within subfolders for files and photos or whatever it is that that app actually does. But the important part is that app cannot access the storage sandbox of any other app, siloing things entirely, which is a great way to keep some of your really personal information from being accessed by other apps when you don't even realize it. This can be a little problematic because from what I've seen at least, it does have the ability to break certain file manager apps and that's just not great for the companies that make these things. But if you're the kind of person who just sort of blindly accepts app permissions when they request them, there's a non-zero chance that a malicious app gets on your phone. And the last thing you want is for an app like that to be able to access everything else that other apps are creating on your device. We started to get a little in the weeds and I'm personally really okay with that. So let's talk about some of the broader stuff that we're gonna see in queue going forward, plus some lower level stuff that while really helpful, you're probably never going to notice on a day-to-day -day basis. I have to start with Project Mainline, partially because it has a really cool name, I think, but also because it really changes how Google tries to handle security updates overall. As it stands right now, if Google wants to push out a new security update, it usually has to go through the carrier, the manufacturer, a lot of people get their hands on these things. And the problem with that is it delays the amount of time between when Google makes them available and when they wind up on your phone. That's clearly not great. What Project Mainline does is it basically removes all the middlemen from that scenario and uses the Play Store itself as the vector for distributing these updates. It's not gonna work for everything though, at least for now. To start, Google says it's going to focus on 14 modules, which include things like time zone data and network permission configuration, which I'm sure you know all about, because I sure do. But that doesn't really matter. This is all not really consumer facing stuff anyway. Long story short, it allows Google to push at least some of its security updates much faster because you're getting it straight from the source. There are a couple caveats though. I think it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that Google just sometimes has to push out a full update the standard way, which will just come in the form of a regular update. It's also worth noting that this feature will not work on anything that doesn't ship with Android Q. Even if you're running a device that you've updated to Q, it simply will not work. It's, it's just not the way it's supposed to be. Google is also doing its part to make your phone just a little bit less identifiable. Back in the old days, certain apps would be able to access permission to look at things like your device's IMEI or its ESN or even its SIM card number. And while that information maybe isn't the worst stuff to have floating around out there. It's certainly not ideal. And if given the right context, it's not hard to see someone using that information to try and figure out where you are or what your phone is doing. That's clearly not cool. So with Android Q, Google is obscuring basically all of that. There are also a few things that'll happen with Android Q and perhaps the Pixel line more broadly that don't specifically have to do with privacy. You wouldn't necessarily assume that, but they do have a pretty profound effect on what happens to your data. Earlier this week, Google showed off what I think is one of the coolest things I've seen at IO in a while, the ability to control your device with your voice with almost zero latency. I mean, that on stage demo where this girl was just telling her phone what to do and talking to Google Assistant at a lightning pace was kind of incredible. And I think for me at least, that says a lot about what the future of smartphone interactions will begin to look like. Hey Google, open calendar, open calculator, open photos, set a timer for 10 minutes. What's the weather today? What about tomorrow? Show me John Legend on Twitter. The really interesting part is how Google made that happen. It shrunk the sort of machine learning and voice recognition software needed to make that possible 
down to a fraction of a fraction of its original size to the point where it fits and runs perfectly well on a smartphone. And what's great about that is if you're talking to your phone as frequently as Google clearly wants you to, that recorded voice data isn't being shipped off to a server somewhere and coming back to your phone. It all lives here. All the processing happens here. So, so that's one less way for someone out there to get access to your late night request to order ice cream or something. I don't know. Now let's be clear, Google has cared about privacy for a while. I mean, you don't get to become the company that powers God knows how many smartphones without worrying about what happens to people's data. Android Q, maybe more than any other Android version I've played with in a while, wants very much to give users more control over that data. And whether or not we do anything about it is kind of on us, but we now have the tools, we just have to choose to do something about it. Obviously, Android Q is quite a ways away from being finished. We're expecting this full build to land probably in the summer, but maybe the fall, we'll kind of see at this point. So regardless, there is a lot of work left to do in digging up its most important features and secrets. And if you wanna see us do that and also just kind of see more broadly what's happening with Google and the rest of the tech world, be sure to subscribe to Engadget. And honestly, thank you for watching. Thank you.